One of the most basic things in audio engineering is the decibel. But it can also get a bit complicated. The decibel, or dB, is logarithmic. For instance, if something is playing at 80 dB and we want to have it twice as loud, we won't get 160 dB. We would actually get 83 dB. A good rule of thumb is that every 3 dB in increase is a doubling in volume or level or sound pressure, etc. Just a dB or a decibel is something that you cannot use. It needs to be connected to a scale. And a scale defines where the zero is for this uh, dB. So we can go into the minus and into the plus. That's cool, but there are over a hundred decibel scales and you only need four or actually three in audio engineering. Two are almost the same. I'm talking about dBV, dBU, dBFS, and dbspl. That's a lot of dbs. So first dbv and dbu. These are references to a voltage, where zero dbu references to 0.75 volts. Zero dbv references to one volt. Oh, and by the way, it has to drive an impedance of 600 ohms but impedance is something for a new Audio Engineering Basics video. The biggest difference between dBV and dBU is that dBV is used for commercial applications and dBU is used for professional applications. So consumer devices run at an output level, the, the mini jack in your phone for instance, run at an output level of minus 10 dBV, while most professional devices run at plus 4 dBU. The difference between these two is 11.79 dB. This sounds a bit strange at first, but we shouldn't forget that uh, they also have a different reference voltage. So if you are using the output of a mobile phone or a laptop or some other consumer device, you have to gain it up at least 11.76 dBs, to be precise, to get it up to a professional level. The next scale is dBFS. dBFS stands for full scale. And at full scale, the zero represents the maximum amount of strength, amount of level a device can handle before it goes into clipping. That's also the reason why you never see a plus one or plus two or plus 20 dBFS measurement. dBFS actually always is in the minus regions. So it's always still 3 dB to go till we go into clipping. dBFS is being used mostly in computers because computers have got a solid mark where they cannot go further. These are the bits. When all the bits are full, then they cannot go further. That's where zero dBFS is at and that's how DAW metering works with a zero at the top. The standard is that minus 18 dBFS represents plus four dBU in the real world. Lastly, we've got dBSPL. SPL stands for sound pressure level and that's an acoustic way of measuring it. dBSPL is always positive and zero dBSPL is 20 micropascal. You can forget it almost immediately, but now you know it's 20 micropascal of pressure difference. That's what a dBSPL is. I know it's very difficult, let me get some more papers. The interesting thing about an SPL measurement is that it's linear, uh, so we cannot do anything with it, we cannot get conclusions out of it. So uh, dBSPL values are always weighted, weighted with a special filter, uh, um, a frequency filter on top of it to mimic the human ear. This filter is marked with an A, the A weighting filter. It looks like this. There are also other filters uh, like dBB and dBC, but they aren't being used in my business. I only use dBA when I need it. And in the studio, you don't need to do a sound pressure level measurement only when you're, you know, 
working with measuring monitors or something or speakers or acoustic. So these three things are the basic decibel guidelines. I hope you learned something from this video. Check out the next audio basics video, which will be up on next Friday. I'm going to post one of these audio engineering basics every week on every Friday. If you want to keep up with them, subscribe below, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment and something you want to know, then I will make a video about it. And I will see you in the next audio engineering basics video. Bye bye.